Here is a video that shows a review and how to make and shoot a Kentucky pistol kit, but I want to make it more in the style of Blackbeard. I know it was a flintlock, but this is what you get. You get a uh, wooden pistol grip. If you keep looking, you get the barrel. It's unfinished uh, carbon steel, so you do need to blue it unless you like that finish. A ramrod, which also needs to be finished. That is the trigger guard and basically the front brass piece that the ramrod goes into. And that is the trigger group and the hammer assembly all in one bag. And those are the instruction manuals. This is an overview of everything that you get. There it is. Now we're gonna use some uh, Minwax wood finish in order to make the stock a little bit darker so that we look a little better. Those are all the parts. And there's the unfinished uh, barrel, which we're gonna fix with Perma Blue. The first run of Perma Blue ran a little bit spotty, so we had to do multiple runs. After five applications of the Perma Blue, you can see that the writing is very crisp. The the steel wool took off uh, the spottiness and now it looks uh, nice and bright but it still has that uh, hard edges that are still a little bit uh, unfinished so it gives it that aged finish that i want here's the pistol and its large part disassembly and you can see the trigger group and the hammer that brass piece strikes the sear and the hammer group and that drops the hammer Pretty simple mechanism. Now for some barrel work. I've uh, polished the barrel to make it a little nicer and uh, notice it still has a little bit of wear looking at the edges. That is a screw that goes into the combustion chamber and I have put on the sights. So now time to put on the screw. You can hand tighten it and then uh, finish it with a screwdriver so you get it nice and tight. Here I've attached the two cleaning rod holders made of brass and they're held in place by screws on the other side of the receiver. You need to play with the screw tension because if it's too tight the cleaning rod will not go in and then I'll put some epoxy so the screws don't get loose. My screws are now epoxied and uh, the cleaning rod slides nicely as you will see. It goes in and it slides out uh, easily. Maybe I should have made it just a tad bit tighter so it doesn't slide out accidentally. I'm going to apply a little bit of Loctite to the sights and to the front barrel screws so that way they don't work themselves loose when I shoot this pistol. The wood receiver is a little too tight for the hammer group, so I had to resort to using a Dremel with a square bit uh, large that opening a little bit. And now it does fit pretty well, and I had to uh, get it into seat uh, properly with, by tapping it slightly with a hammer. But now it fits pretty well. The trigger group took a lot more Dremeling so that I can get it to fit flush, but now it works. and. One note is that there is a screw on the opposite side of the hammer that if it's too tight, it will not uh, drop the hammer. That your hammer will not go back either. So if you do find yourself in a situation, just loosen the screw. The Loctite didn't work quite so well in the sights because the sights did start to come loose. And there is a little bit of play in the cleaning rod so it will fall out if you tilt the barrel down but the pistol functions just fine there is a screw on the opposite side of the hammer that if you get it too tight the hammer will not drop and that is actually what those yellow spacers are made for um, I did find one piece that uh, one spring that I don't know where it goes pistol functions fine without it but I'm sure it functions much better with it I'm actually pretty happy with the way this came out. Overall, the kit does not require a whole lot of skill, 
but it does require a whole lot of time and a little bit of perma blue uh, some stain and a paintbrush and a q-tip to get to the hard to get places with a paintbrush a hammer or maybe a small mallet some loctite and definitely a screwdriver that leatherman that i first used did not work so well so i had to resort to a screwdriver the instructions are definitely wanting there's more information in the safety manual than in the one page fold out for uh, assembly instructions the only thing that they say that's very accurate in the assembly instructions is that you need to do a whole lot of hand fitting so dremel a little bit fit it dremel again a little bit at a time until the parts fit if you dremel too much you end up very sloppy loading the percussion pistol is really simple first shake out or measure 30 grains of rs powder which is the same as i'm using for my muzzle loader then use a 45 caliber ball it does not need a patch but you can use a patch if you want to get better velocity shove it down and then use a number 11 percussion cap the same as for the 54 caliber rifle when you're ready to shoot this is the first shot at the range to make sure that everything functions before I shoot three shots to group it. I aimed center target on 8 inch target at 10 meters and one shot was center, one was low and one was to the right. Not bad for not using wads and for an old side pistol. I noticed the rear sight is pretty loose when I was ready to clean it which might explain the lateral spread when I shot at the range. Clean the pistol you will first need to take out that screw and that nipple. The screw comes out with a screwdriver, there it is out and there is the screw. And you can see the hole that the nipple came out of right there and that is the nipple that is the nipple wrench right there also need a brush and a swab to clean out the barrel the nipple wrench has a piece that unscrews in the back that has a thin wire that you can use to clean out the nipple you just punch that through the nipple a bunch of times from both sides until it runs through clean with no resistance. That's what get, gets rid of the fouling inside the nipple. Once the nipple is clean, you need to clean the nipple hole and that hole on the side. 
The best way to do that is using a Q-tip, which happens to fit in there perfectly. It took me two Q-tips before I got a clean Q-tip coming out. Once those holes are clean, then you need to clean the barrel using a bunch of hot water. Just take it to the sink, run a whole lot of hot water through it, then run the swab, run the hot water some more, run the brush, run the swab, do this a few times until the water comes out clear, then run a swab with oil and reassemble. The pistol is now reassembled, the screw and the nipple are back in and everything is oiled up and we are done. Last thing is a function check and it works. We are done. Hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe for more similar content. Thank you. To summarize, I enjoyed this project a lot, even though there was a lot of epoxy and dremeling involved, but I like it so much, I'm thinking of doing a blunderbust in the future. Stay tuned.